Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to share with you all my experience of building the modular pipeline feature for the KedgeWiz project, which is a web tool for visualizing machine learning pipelines. But first of all, let me start with a huge friendly hi to all of you. I'm Susanna, and I'm a front-end software engineer at Quantum Black, where I'm currently part of the core team for the KedgeWiz project a tool to visualize machine learning pipelines that are built on the Kedro library, which by the way, I'm going to walk you through all of this in a second. I'm also a Google developer expert in web technologies. And fun fact, I used to be a computational designer slash architect, where I had been using code to solve a lot of design problems in architecture. If this is something you're interested to talk about, please definitely hit me up. So before I dive into the Kedro phase project, let me introduce you to Kedro, an open source framework for creating modular data science code for production. Currently, a lot of data engineers and scientists use Jupyter Notebooks to develop their machine learning pipeline locally on their machines, which makes it extremely hard for them to collaborate with the team on this work, and not to say turn it into production code that can be deployed on the cloud. Kedro aims to solve that problem by allowing them to build modular data science code using software engineering principles that can be easily versioned by Git and hosted on remote repositories. So as you all might have experienced, one of the main pain points of developing machine learning pipelines is that it is easy to get lost and make sense of a pipeline as it grows in complexity, especially if it is built by a team of several data scientists. This is where KedgeWiz comes in. We are a web app that provides an interactive flowchart of the latest pipeline that the user has built on Kedro, where they can also access some further details of each node that they've developed within the Kedro project. So the setup is simple. Within the Kedro project, the user can spin up the KedgeWiz app by a CLI command. From the Kedro project, the KedgeWiz server will be able to obtain the following set of information that is crucial to the construction of the interactive flowchart. So the first is the set of pipelines that are constructed within the Kedro project. Secondly, all the nodes that are defined within each pipeline, which by the way, nodes are Python functions that are defined to perform specific tasks in a pipeline. Third is the edges that links up the nodes to form the pipeline. And last but not least, the set of tags defined in a pipeline, which nodes can be assigned a tag for easy filtering of the set of nodes for say, different purposes as defined by the user. That set of information is served as a giant nested object where KedgeWiz uses to construct the interactive flowchart. So our stack consists of React with Redux, a self-state management tool, and D3 in constructing our interactive visualization. So before we dive further into, into the features, let me walk through our architecture, which is very different from that of a traditional web hosted app. One important deviation is that we are a locally hosted app where our hosted data sits within the Kedro project, where on spinning up the KedgeWiz app from the CLI, a locally spun Python server will serve the data to the KedgeWiz app via three main endpoints with the main endpoint providing the set of data for constructing the main pipeline. On having fetched the huge data object, the app will go through an initial data ingestion phase in breaking down the object into what we call the pipeline state, which by the way, we will also combine that data that was stored in the browser's local storage on previous load of the same pipeline in order to optimize front end performance as well as setting up a set of initial app state called non-pipeline state to form the global Redux store in serving data to populate various parts of the app. So here you can see an, the overview of the front end app and data flow, where we have four core components that makes up the visualization. So first there is the sidebar on the left, which is used to control and filter nodes that are visualized on the flowchart. Think of it as a control panel that controls the display of nodes on the flowchart. And then there is the flowchart itself, which visualizes the pipeline. And then there's the minima component, which allows the user to quickly navigate different parts of the complex flowchart. The metadata panel here um, will display further information about each node. And in, within this, each component is highly correlated to each other in terms of interactivity 
which is where Redux comes into place in providing highly performant updates of app state to trigger changes in other parts of the app. So on the subject of Redux, one important thing that makes our app different from others is how we utilize the selected setup in updating even the calculations of the component itself. So in other words, we don't use React hooks, but we rely solely on that selected to update the component state and conduct calculations. So for example, as you see on the left here, the cyber component itself is a giant parent component that consists of more than eight subcomponents with all of them highly correlated to each other. So instead of setting up hooks to perform all the relevant calculations for updating the state of the cyber components, so we actually used, we had set up a custom sidebar um, selector to perform all the relevant calculations for updating the state of all the cyber components from the global store. The same goes for our flowchart component, where we also adopt a similar setup of a custom flowchart selector to perform all the required calculations to generate the flowchart. So after all this introduction, let us jump to the core of this presentation, which is a set of features and updates that we introduced to KedroVis since the introduction of modular pipelines on the Kedro project throughout the early half of 2021. So what is a modular pipeline, you might ask? As you might recall, a pipeline is formed by joining different nodes, which you can see here with nodes A, B, and C. So now you might want to reuse this configuration in a later stage when you construct your pipeline. By defining that configuration as a modular pipeline, you're now able to reuse and reference that modular pipeline at various parts of your main pipeline, rather than the need to individually redefine all the nodes again. So you can think of this as Legos. So with Legos, you have all the fundamental building blocks. Say you have assembled a race car component, you can use race car now to refer to that configuration instead of needing to grab all the required elements to assemble that every time. And since the introduction of this ability to define and reuse modular pipelines in the Kedro project, the Kedrovis team started to look into new drastic changes to support this new way of pipeline setup. So what you see here is a pre-modular pipeline version of Kedrovis, where as you can see here on the left, our sidebar lists all the various elements on the flowchart by four flat lists. There's tags, nodes, datasets, and parameters. Selecting individual tags allows you to filter out the associated nodes on the flowchart, which selecting the other elements allows you to zoom in on the node on the flowchart while accessing the relevant information of the node via the metadata panel. The introduction of the modular pipeline feature on Kedro means new changes to the data that is returned by the Kedro server. So here within the pipeline object, we have a new modular pipeline field that lists all the defined modular pipelines on that pipeline, with each node object having a new modular pipeline field that tells you which modular pipelines that node belongs to. So before we dive into a redesign of the UI, we built the first version MVP by recycling the concept of tags. With tags, we can filter out the associate nodes on the flowchart, where we apply the same concept in listing out all modular pipelines as a nested list on a sidebar. And the user can select different modular pipelines, similar to tags, to filter out the selected nodes of a modular pipeline. So they can see which modular pipelines are defined in the project and what node belongs to that modular pipeline. The first MVP proved to be a feature loved by our users, which brought us to the next step in introducing a drastic change in our current sidebar UI. Instead of listing the four sets of elements as flat lists, we are now displaying them following the hierarchy of the modular pipeline tree. That is mainly because we want the users to adopt the modular pipeline mindset in accessing the pipelines on the sidebar. We also introduced drastic changes in our search UI where instead of displaying results by simply filtering through full flat lists, we are now displaying the results under the modular pipeline tree hierarchy, where the search results are nested within the parent pipeline, even though the parent does not contain any of the search keyword. So now that we have the tree list logic defined, we further took the modular pipeline concept into our flowchart visualization, where the set of nodes that are now defined as a modular pipeline 
is condensed and collapsed into a single node, as what you see on the right, where the user can control the expansion of the modular pipeline via the sidebar. Another feature we have introduced is the focus mode feature, where the user can choose to focus on a modular pipeline where only nodes belonging to that modular pipeline, as well as its inputs and outputs, are visualized in the flowchart. So there you have it, the complete set of modular pipeline um, features that we introduced to KedroViz. So here, as you can see, the user can choose to expand the module pipeline via the sidebar. We have took the tags out also in a separate filter panel, as you see on the bottom right, bottom, sorry, bottom left, <laughs> but the user can still choose to filter out by nodes, data sets, and parameters. The user can also search the sidebar, where the search results will now be displayed in place with the inner nodes of that search result displayed in the right tree hierarchy of modular pipelines. So after introducing the series of features related to the modular pipeline setup, since the latter half of 2021, the Kedro team focused on developing the next big step of features for experiment tracking. As some of you might be familiar with this on a daily basis, experiment tracking is a way to record all information that you need to recreate and analyze a data science experiment. Within the Kedro team, we had a series of user research and discovery around this topic where after months of research, we have defined it as the login for parameters, metrics, models, and other data set types. So here you can see the GitHub issue that outlines the research and discussion on the discovery work. We have defined several milestones for developing the set of features, with the first milestone simply focusing on visualizing the captured metrics from each experiment and showcasing the progression of the metric as a plot over different experiment runs. So here on the right, you can see a dataset node that represents the captured metrics, where Kedro will automatically register that dataset as the tracking metric, and KedroViz will generate this plot, as you see here on the bottom right, uh, that will showcase the various results over multiple experiments. Before I dive deeper into the next set of features, let me explain to you about the setup of each, Kedro, each experiment in Kedro and how experiment data is captured. Within Kedro, once you have set up experiment tracking with your logged metrics as a tracking data set, all that data is logged within the tracking folder with each tracking data set having its own dedicated folder to organize all logged data of future experiments. One important concept of experiment tracking within Kedro is that each Kedro one is an experiment that generates a set of metric data which the generated data, generated data for each metric data set sits under a timestamped folder represent that one. In other words, that experiment. So here you can see the various generated data sets from multiple runs with, with which they, this set of data set is used to generate that progression plot as I've shown you earlier. So here you can see a, a demo of how to access your tracking data set and the progression plot from the Kedro phase flowchart. So let's say we have this tracking data set for the R2 score. Once you have clicked on the data set node on Kedro Viz, you will then see this plot on the sidebar where you can choose to expand the plot and a wider plot will show for you to analyze that data as, just, as we see here. So after implementing this first piece, we then move on to construct a core UI that lets you examine all logged metrics related to a run in details, bookmark and rename runs, as well as compare metrics among the runs. On the front-end engineering side of implementing this, other than using Redux for data fetching and management, we have opted for using GraphQL as the data fetching layer for the experiment tracking set of features. So here, as you can see, so on top of the current existing architecture of KedroVis as what you've seen earlier, we are now introducing a new GraphQL endpoint that is served from the Python server which reads in experiment data served by a SQL-like database, which I will actually go through more on this setup with the SQL-like database in more details later on in, our, in this presentation. The GraphQL endpoint is consumed by the Apollo client as set up within the front-end code base in serving the set of UI components for experiment tracking. So within the KedroVis team, 
in preparation for the new experiment tracking set of features. So I've also done a series of research work on the tools or a new front end architecture of this setup for this new API integration layer for experiment tracking. So this one you can see here is an issue that outlines a set of considerations for this research. So first, as you can see here on this slide, this is a set of requirements and proposed technologies to meet the requirements of the new experiment tracking UI. One important requirement is that we want real time updates of runs as they are generated, where GraphQL subscription comes into play with those real time updates instead of the need to constantly pull the backend. Within the GraphQL setup, there are a few clients where we can consider as part of the API integration layer, as you can see here. So there are four possible setups to accommodate the requirements. One being GraphQL with Apollo client or GraphQL with Urkel, which is another GraphQL client. This other setup being where we utilize the existing REST API with React Query, as you see on the bottom left, or the REST API with Redux, alongside a plugin for WebSocket integration called RTK Query. So as you can see here, this is kind of um, a comparison between these four different setup in comparing the value versus effort of setting up um, setting up that um, API integration layer. And as you, what you can see here, Apollo and GraphQL is kind of like the optimal setup. So having, having decided on, on the optimal setup with Apollo client and GraphQL, to meet the requirements of the new experiment tracking UI. Here you can see that this is the new data fetching setup with the GraphQL layer and the client on the front end. So instead of having a um instead of like you know consuming directly from the web server, we have this GraphQL la GraphQL endpoint and GraphQL layer that serves the experiment tracking data to the front end. So from then on, we have also devised the optimal world sequence in relation to our development work, where both the GraphQL endpoint and the set of UI features are developed in parallel before the front end code base, um, uh, they do in parallel before the front end code base switches over to the newly set up GraphQL endpoints. So as I briefly mentioned before about the SQL-like database, so one of the key points of this setup is the setup of a session store SQL-like database as you see in the middle here, which is automatically generated on your first schedule one after setting up experiment tracking. The database will store all run-related data, such as the naming, the nodes, etc., as well as the reference to each tracking data set with which the schedule-based backend will read from when fetching the experiment date, tracking data for each turn to serve the front end. So here you can see the GraphQL endpoint in action, where the GraphQL schema would will define all the experiment tracking data that will be served to the front end. So here you have it, the complete set of features for experiment tracking, which includes listing all the locked metrics of each run, as well as allowing you to compare between the metrics of each run. So in looking ahead, the schedule team is actually exploring further development of the experiment tracking features while the KedgeVis team is also looking into full migration of the data fetching layer from Redux to GraphQL. So it will extend to use, we, will, we are looking into using to extend to use GraphQL for not just experiment tracking, um, tracking UI, but also for the flowchart UI. So this could potentially imply setting up a dedicated GraphQL layer between the existing REST API and the front end to allow the data to be consumed by Apollo client on the front end. This setup, um, what, what you see here, will reiterate the above in where all state management within the React front end will be now managed by the GraphQL API layer via the, um, via the Apollo cache instead of Redux, as well you can see here. So um, that, uh, thank you everyone. And it's been such a pleasure to walk you through. And please do reach out to me via Twitter or LinkedIn should you hope to discuss any of the content. I look forward to hearing from all, you, all of you and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.